years ago, the neighborhood kids started coming to my church, New Life Presbyterian Church on the corner of Monroe Avenue and Rosedale Street. On Sunday mornings, they would blow through that side entrance, whistle through the fellowship hall, turn into the kitchen, go down the stairs to the Sunday school rooms, loop around the bathrooms, and end up back at the door where they came in. Now, I have to admit, it is a circuit that's made for the game of chase or the fa ever favorite hide and seek. The older members of the church, they weren't real keen on the kids' enthusiasm. For some reason, bumping into an older woman with a cane or buzzing through a group in conversation or sending napkins spiraling off the refreshment table <clears throat> diminished the reverence of the Sunday morning experience. And all this happened before the 10 o'clock service even started. Our kids would sit themselves in the front pews of the middle section of the sanctuary where everybody in attendance could see them. And more times than not, when the choir was singing their praises to God, one of the boys would stand up and say, I got to go to the bathroom. And the little brother would say, me too. Other times, when the pastor's exhorting the congregation to love their neighbors, the girls could be heard saying, you're dirty, you're ugly, you're mama. <laughs> the sanctity of the sanctuary would return when the kids mobbed off to Sunday school leaving the members of the congregation to wonder what they had done to have God punish them with this plague of restless heathens. <laughs> it was when the question, what are we going to do with these kids, re reached that fever pitch of a praise Jesus at a revival meeting that I decided it was time to run. And not run away, but run with our kids were great runners. They ran around the church, they ran the streets, they ran away from lecturing adults. And so the Monroe Milers was born. It was like herding cats. That's how my husband and I described that very first session where we trained seven Monroe Milers. On a typical Wednesday night when five o'clock would come around and we would be ready to run, one kid had no laces in his shoes, Another kid needed a belt for his jeans. That one learned early on, you can't sag your pants if you want to run. <laughs> There'd be another kid in the bathroom, and still yet, of course, another one hiding somewhere in the church. So we'd scrounge for makeshift laces and a belt. We'd wait for the peeing runner. We'd find the hiding kid, and finally, we'd be off. Enthusiasm ran high those early weeks of training when we were walking four minutes and running one and the spring weather was cool, we'd be a mini mob walking or running down Monroe Avenue heading towards Cobbs Hill Park. Questions would be interspersed with guidance. How far is a 5K? What's a good time? Pace yourself, boys. If you sprint like that, you'll never go the distance. What if I lose? What if I win? Please wait for the light when you cross the street. Please. As the summer heat arrived and we started running four minutes and walking one, attendance kind of waned. We lost two boys all together. And my husband and I were starting to get frustrated. We were there every Wednesday and Sunday. Where were our kids? Where was their commitment? Should we quit? We decided that our kids probably didn't have a lot of experience with keeping promises and fulfilling obligations. So we decided we would soldier on and show them how it's done. And that's what we did. In some practices, only one kid showed up, but we ran anyways. And we found out that that was a great opportunity to talk strategy, running tips, and just push a little harder. Other times, the whole crew would arrive, and we had to contend with our tree vandal who would run into the woods and pick leaves off trees. And we had our trip and push our friends pair, and we had our bush and, bush and fence jumper, and our stop at every porta potty girl. 
then the day of reckoning came. It was the Brighton 4th of July 5K race. Brighton Chamber of Commerce 4th of July 5K race. Our trip and push pair went out fast. Too fast. They died about mile one and walked the rest of the way to the finish line. Our porta potty girl, she ran a great first mile and then she finished the race with a walk some, run some, walk some, run some. Tree Vandal ran the entire race and he finished it in 26 minutes and 19 seconds. And our youngest runner, nine year old Tony, finished that 5K in 22 minutes, 49 seconds, and he placed fifth in his age group. From these inauspicious beginnings, that's us, the first five Monroe Milers running that 5K. From these inauspicious beginnings have grown the Monroe Milers program of today. Last fall, 48 kids, ran a 5k race and they were guided in their efforts by 26 volunteer coaches. We've evolved into a diverse community of runners. We have kids from a variety of socioeconomic backgrounds. We got a grant from the Greater Rochester Health Foundation and we received tremendous support from the Greater Rochester Running Community and Fleet Feet Sports. And Cross your fingers. Right now we are in first place in an online contest sponsored by MVP. It's the MVP Project Go. If we win, we get a fundraiser with Abby Wambach. Cross your fingers. Monroe Milers is a serious running program. We emphasize good attendance, good form, and pacing. We keep track of running times. We record personal records, we talk about hydration, we talk about nutrition. Hard work pays off. That's our mantra. But in the end, we know it's really not about the running. It's about building community. It's about making connections. It's about opening doors. Despite the ensuing upheaval, my church welcomed the neighborhood kids in. And in a, if you can't beat them, join them attitude, we decided to run. And we've been running ever since. And we welcome any interested youth to run with us. Our group has grown sevenfold. And we are blessed with coaches who are doctors and lawyers and veterinarians and engineers and teachers and business people and stay-at-home parents. We still have energetic kids that burst through our church doors. But now, they're more likely to go to the kitchen and help set up for a breakfast or grab bulletins and greet people at the sanctuary door or help take up the collection later in the service. The Monroe Milers has become a point of pride for our congregation, and it gives something for our kids and our adults to talk about. And opportunities have opened up for our runners too. Tree Vandal, he's become a very good runner, but now he's more interested in coaching our new runners. And through connections he's made with our program and our church, he's been able to spend the last three summers up at camp in the Adirondacks. And they've asked him to come and train to be a counselor. But that conflicts with his participation in the Upward Bound program at the U of R, another connection he made by running through the program. Our Tony, he doesn't run so much with us anymore. He's really involved in football and basketball because Tony's a phenomenal athlete. But due to his participation in the Milers program, he was selected as a Monroe County Healthy Hero, and he was in a television spot last November. He's also had the opportunity to go to summer camp. Porta Potty Girl still runs with the Monroe Milers, and she's been coached by, a, she's been mentored by a couple of our coaches, and they've taught her how to cook, 
how to bake, how to sew. She also joined her track team when she was in middle school. And one of our trip and push pair is now our fastest miler. Last November, he ran a 5K race in 20 minutes and a one mile race in five. And he's talking about being a pediatrician when he grows up. Now our Monroe Milers program has grown right along with our kids. When we have interest meshing with need, we expand. Uh, we started a walking group because we had a number of girls who wanted to participate but weren't quite ready for running. And we had coaches who were willing to walk. Last fall, we started a young runners group that trained for a one mile race because we had a number of younger siblings that wanted to participate and we had parents who were willing to coach. I've recently been asked if I could include some kids with autism and I'm all for that as long as I can get the coaching support. We've talked about making the program year round. We've talked about taking our model to another site. Our current grant expires after this spring. And our current grantor is now only funding programs that are affiliated with schools. So where we go in the future kind of depends on us getting a reliable source of financial support. Okay. Open doors, let trouble in, and then run. <laughs> that is the Monroe Milers motto. It's like training for a race. It's hard work but it pays off. Thank you. <laughs>